So here they are. First, discover some behind the scenes magic with our pen and ink cheat. Go to the cheat editor and enter D, L, K, T, D and R. Then select pen and ink from the cheat menu. Go back to the action and all the texture mapping has disappeared. It's a bit of a shame as you lose the detail, but it does give you a real insight into how the game was put together. Our second cheat has the opposite effect. It allows you to look at all the different people and dinosaurs you meet in greater depth. Before you start a game, access the cheat editor and enter T, H, B, S and T. When you return to the cheat menu, select gallery mode. From here, you can study your adversaries in glorious 3D. By zooming in and rotating, you'll see exactly what makes these creatures so fierce. But more importantly, it's the best way to really show off the game's magnificent creations. But if you just want to laugh, why not try our third cheat, Tiny Mode. At the cheat editor, enter D, N, C, H and N. Now select Tiny Enemy from the cheat menu. Every opponent you now meet will have shrunk in size, but be warned, they're as dangerous as ever, especially if you're not wearing shin pads. Using our cheats may not help Turok protect that all-important barrier between Earth and the Lost World, but it will give you a better understanding of how they made the ultimate dinosaur hunter. If there's one thing that doesn't stay still on the internet, it's the technology. Most of the advances have been in graphics, with animation and virtual worlds becoming commonplace. Now though, sound and especially music are finding their way onto the web. For example, there was Eurobash, a competition to encourage young European-based bands. Music fans with a net connection and the right web software could watch and listen to the show from anywhere in the world. You know what you do, you do so well. But for those of us who didn't have a connection, the music challenge was also being shown at cyber cafes. Normally a place to have a cup of coffee and go online, the electronic meeting area attracted just the right kind of people to the event. It's an excellent new idea. It's tying together more cyber cafes around the country than have ever been in any kind of event before. It's bringing new music to new people in a new format. The sound quality may not match that of a CD, but listening is only part of the attraction. This is also a rare opportunity for young musicians and songwriters to be seen and heard, not just at a live venue, but in many countries simultaneously. So we needed something else, like there's somebody else, some other company coming in and, and doing some different competition. Sending music over the internet, either live or pre-recorded, has become the latest way to find an audience. The entertainment industry is, after all, always looking for new ways to sell its products. So, as more people switch on their PCs rather than their televisions, using the web to market music makes perfect sense. Still to come, why big names are joining small companies. And stand by for the next star of Nintendo. OK, Dan, what are you going to have on... Designing a top-selling game in today's highly competitive, high-stakes market isn't something just anyone can do. Simply being able to produce incredible graphics or think up strange and unusual characters won't get you very far. It's how everything slots together that really counts. Top artists, programmers and producers need high budgets to get their ideas onto our console or computer screens. To do that, they're often attracted to big companies who are willing to give them a lot of money in the hope that their games will be blockbuster hits. But despite this, the creators of games like Wing Commander and Quake are now actually leaving the larger software houses that have made them such a success to start all over again. I think some of the real talent in the industry does want to break away um, because they want to get back to the basics. I know it's very difficult to um, work sometimes in a, in a big consolidated company and because these people have had great success they can find the backing and they can get, have the resources to be able to continue to, to be creative in a small environment. One of the biggest names to feel just that way was Peter Molyneux, founder of Bullfrog, a company he sold to Electronic Arts. Before the release of his last Bullfrog title, Dungeon Keeper, he was already hinting at his unhappiness. 
the very start, with seven people, it's easy to make everyone creative. And if someone isn't creative, it's easy to spot that. But when you've got a, when you've got a hundred people, it's much much harder to do. To give you an example of bullfrog, we used to, if we ever had a meeting, we had perhaps a meeting every two or three weeks. And with a corporate culture, there's meetings every two or three minutes. Rich organisations are buying up smaller independents all the time, but there's no point if the best people in those companies don't want to stay. IDOS Interactive was formed from several existing groups, one of whom was Core Design, creators of Tomb Raider. IDOS weren't about to make its top coders unhappy by making them feel like a number. IDOS as a company goes out and looks for small groups of development and we don't have a 250 person internal development uh, group because it just is not the way that the creative spark uh, flies. Whether it's Sid Meier with his Civilization series or David Perry bringing magic to MDK, it's brilliant individuals leading talented teams that create innovation and generate huge profits. Both sides are having to learn to respect what each one does best to help the industry grow. Sid Meier and uh, Peter Molyneux want to make great games. They don't want to sit on corporate boards and worry about corporate issues. But they're still going to be affiliated to big publishers. They're going to make the games they want to make and then the big publishers are going to take those games out and bring them to the masses. So the biggest players in the software game are still writing huge checks, but they finally realised that controlling creativity could be a bad idea. Yippee! Joining the ever-growing number of specialised racing games is Formula Karts, another title in Sega's kart series. Claiming to be the most realistic racer in its genre, but then who doesn't, Formula Karts boasts a fully 3D environment and some very realistic gameplay. Sega released Formula Karts on the PC before the Saturn. Although this seems strange at the time, Sega may need all the PC experience it can get, as their new 64-bit machine, the Saturn II, is rumoured to be using a computer-based 3D graphics card. Whether you choose to race in championship or arcade mode, the action is both fast and frantic. With speeds reaching 130 miles per hour, together with some sensitive handling, the gameplay is as near to real life as you're going to get. Formula Karts nestles neatly between the ultra-realistic Formula One titles and the more exhilarating rally games. By combining this subtle mix of two different racing genres, Formula Karts becomes a well-balanced game, but one that doesn't excel in any single area. Hard Boiled is a game set in a bleak Los Angeles of the future. You are Nixon, a man who believes he has a happy family life, but is actually an android assassin. The memory of your wicked deeds is erased every evening. But now, Nixon's memory wipe has gone wrong, and you and the other androids are fighting for your freedom. So much for the clever story, this is a 3D blaster. Your mission is to reach the Nero Tower, home to a bad guy called Williford, and destroy his empire. There are plenty of things to blast, including tanks, runaway robots and boxes of dynamite. But if you're looking for speed, this isn't the game for you. Hard Boiled concentrates on detail. It has excellent 3D rendered graphics, absorbing gameplay, great backgrounds and some rather spectacular explosions. Hard Boiled is loosely based on a comic. If you're a fan of the series, however, you may be disappointed, as this is ultimately a computer game, not a story. That said, it is a lot of fun.